All right, what's up, everyone, and welcome to the Bitwig 2.3 beta. I've been waiting to make a video on this, and I finally can. Beta has been released. So let's get down to business. So first off, we have some new samples in here. We actually have some stuff from Polarity. Good work for him. Good job. You got, you made it. You made it to, to the stuff. You, you got on. You made it. Cool. You put in the work. That's great. Um, and some recognition for it. Awesome. So what I want to do is actually check out the pitch bending stuff because that would be really nice so i guess we should test this on some vocals so i'm going to use maybe some so here we go we have some words now let's get some let's see do i i have packs right where's my packs here we go some packs let's look for maybe some loops in here i try to find some like really tight kicks because i think those will kind of show it off uh pretty well yeah let's go with these drums here so here we go let's put all of these at 110 for right now let's say and then we can go from here with the pitch bending process with the time stretching process we're also going to select them all here's our chance to find maybe the first problem okay here we go we got spectral unstretched granular how nice it's even got little descriptions for solo voice and instruments so this would look good for vocals maybe synths synths that don't have chords possibly so maybe something like a dubstep bass and you want to pitch it kind of to tune and you can just use cyclic and that looks like it would work well a slices audio onsets with ping pong looping multi-band granular stretching granular stretching neutral at origin pitch tempo then we have the elastic preserves the transients spectral stretching transient preserving spectral stretching with formant control spectral stretching so obviously these are all going to take different levels of cpu pro is going to be the most taxing one where eco might be the most cpu freeing one like it's not going to use so much cpu and elastic is just going to use the regular amount of cpu so let's try out elastic pro on all of these and let's see how it affects the vocals and everything else. So these vocals are at 132, and when done this way. That actually sounds really good still, and that's a difference of 22 BPM. Let's put this up to 174 just real quick and see what happens, see if it gets clicky. So we can actually drop a little more even 32 beats and it still sounds like really good really good sounding uh we can put up the resolution here even if we want defines the resolution of the spectral envelope use performance shifting smaller values suited to high pitch sounds and vice versa so you want them to be you want these envelopes to be very close together when you're stretching something else so it's taking more of the data and processing it that way and then likewise, when you squish things together, lower values of sample sections taken will be working much better in that form. So that's nice. Now, if we put it up to the 174 like we were listening to before, we can hear that I think a lot of the problems in the sound is actually the vibrato. I don't think that the stretching itself is artifacting too badly. So if we do something... A little less crazy. 110, 174 is pretty big change. So let's try doing like 140. 
it it jumps out a little bit. We can also try what Elastic Solo would sound like. Sad if I'm too high to look down. Maybe I'm just flying. It's all good. Sounded a little better. There was something that was in this one towards the end of the middle part or the first part. Look down. It kind of vibratos in weird spots right there it, it, it adds that but when i do the elastic solo it's like softer the vibrato on that like last little syllable there so there's definitely a difference i think the solo does sound better than the pro uh, we can listen to the drums now they're on elastic pro we can move formants around Now, this doesn't seem to actually be making a difference when we're just changing its tempo. But when we change its pitch, I wonder, will something different happen? Interesting. So it like maintains the pitch when you turn down the resolution and then you turn down the formant, whereas if you don't, it moves the pitch then a lot more. So this is what it sounds like. And then we put it up to one to 140 here over here. Going up maintains its qualities fairly well. How about here in the drums? Now the kick and the snare fall apart more than the hi-hats when you pull them down, things like crashes. It's because the hi-hats have those short, sweet attacks, so when you lengthen them, out, lengthen them out a little bit, you don't really notice, especially if you start throwing in gates. If you throw in some gates, do a pitch down, and have the... the it just kind of changes the characteristic of the hat. Uh, it won't actually change it too much in its quality, which is nice. But here, it's working really well. So this is uh, with a form of control. So let's try doing elastic. We can hear there that Eco is worse than Pro. We switch it to Eco, you can hear it in the kick. The kick sounds a lot more rubbery. It changes the frequency spectrum a little bit. I would say it dulls the highs when you stretch it out. So this could be countered a little bit with the formant filter, which is nice. Although in most situations, I don't even use a formant filter. Like in Ableton, I just use the Complex Pro and I just deal with that. So the uh, stretching is pretty nice. Like I'm not going to go through all of the modes uh, super hard because I'm, I'm sure they're going to be fairly similar. They're going to have specific uses that will sound better for specific things, and that's obvious, but it's not like uh, we need to go find examples for every single one here, so...
This is the ping pong effect that we were talking about earlier. Or no, it's the retro one. Oh, so this is what we were using before. I'm pretty sure this is, um, it says retro stretching. Uh, I'm assuming that is relevant to like, that's what it used before. This sounds similar to what, what was kind of going on before in Bitwig just 2.2. But it is actually different. Interesting. I have the slice. Slices audio at loops with ping pong looping. This might be ideal for the drum loops, honestly. If you want to maintain their their maximum quality here, we have our onsets. We can come down here and adjust them, and you know we could we could make precise edits to the the drum loop here. Let's go ahead and That sounds like a really nice creative effect. Can make some really glitchy junk go on with that. It's a slice. Then we have the stretch granular, stretch HD. So I think this is what we had before. No? Yes, there it is. Compare that to say what I'm going to generalize is the best one is Elastic Pro. So let's listen to this. Go ahead, throw Elastic Pro on. It's got the cleanness to it. Obviously, any time stretching will be noticeable if not done correctly. Uh, if you're trying to mask it up or whatever, or if you're just doing it too much, it's it's unavoidable. There's nothing that can be done with today's algorithms. You're not going to get the perfect ever, but surprising. I think I think reason it does handle the pitch stretching. A little better, but they're very much known for their pitch stretching. You can like drag out tracks and change their tempo or pitch, and it can do the whole thing fairly well. Digital Performer is also one of those DAWs that is very in your face about their time stretching as well. So, this is definitely an improvement from Bitwig as it was before. It's going to be useful, that is for sure. Especially because we have form and control that we can modulate in the elevo in the envelope of the actual clip now. So that's uh, awesome. We can draw in made automation in the clip, which is one of the beautiful things about Bitwig, where you don't have to enable to either do automation or have really limited things of what you can do inside the clip. Just kidding. It's very similar, but this is going to be very nice for working with it. Because now we have these formant shapes. We now have this format option in our audio clips here, and we can do all sorts of shit. Overall, really impressed with the time stretching, especially with vocals. This will be nice if you want to, you know, make any adjustments to kick drums. If you like to put them on the, the clip, the playlist itself here, you can, you know, tighten them, shorten them a little bit. Vocal changes, you want to change the BPM slightly, just slap all your shit on Elastic Pro time stretch it and then just rebalance them in place all good real quick we're going to check this sampler out and it's not even going to be in some super detailed way i would just like to know what has happened to the pitching in here we still have adsr or shot no difference we can have a full screen view here we can see some other stuff we'll look at this in a moment in a different video but as far as I can see, there isn't any way to change the pitch. So I don't know what changes have been made to the sampler. Does it use better algorithms or is it the same? 
I can only assume that it's using the best algorithm possible and that they didn't just update only the audio clips on the playlist. For example, let's say Elastic Pro is the best type of stretching you can do, which in general cases it usually is. Elastic Pro then should have been incorporated into the sampler. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe we'll find out in the next video. But from what I can see, unlike Ableton, there are no options to actually go ahead and just change it here. So you can have it so it plays faster as you move up or if it maintains speed but changes the pitch in a different way. So we'll maybe go into that a little more in the next one. So see you there.